Right, here's a quick tutorial on the chin jab. Right? So the chin jab is the World War II staple of combative striking. Basically, it's an uppercut coming up with a palm configuration. So pulling back the hand, like holding a large grapefruit. If you trace down the little finger to the base of the palm, this circle here is the platform for the chin and the jawbone. So you're not hitting with any part of the hand that will bend backwards, you're hitting with the part of the palm that's in line with the forearm. So that when this comes up and under the chin configuration, it's coming up as a unit of bone, driven from the floor by driving the foot into the floor and surging up with the hip. Much the same way as you would if you were to slip and throw a shovel hook or an uppercut. You would surge upward with the hip. So again, all power striking comes from the feet. But in this case, the hip surge is coming upward and driving this whole unit straight up. Now the chin jab, like the uppercut, is employed from a close range. So this kind of range. So the range where I would have a cross is in where I'm going to throw the chin jab. The range where I'd have an uppercut is where I'm going to throw the chin jab. So closer um, perspective, somewhat arm's length, about an elbow length away. Now the classic staple scooper comes up from the hip, straight up, straight up and under the jawbone as you flank and check the arm. And you flank and check as you drive the shot straight up. And if it's close range, person is adrenalized running off his mouth, tongue's going in and out. High probability that he's gonna break his teeth and bite his tongue. But the primary application is to snap the head back by the jaw and create some brain spin and some collision inside the skull. Also, plausible cer cervical vertebrae damage, depending on how hard you implement it. Now, the chin jab employed from this range here with a check should be, in my opinion, thrown like a jab. So when you throw a jab, you don't leave the jab out, you boom, pull it back nice and fast so that you can use it then. So use that analogy to a chin jab. This is a, a jab in motion. This is a stick in motion. A jab in motion from here would be right here and then retract nice and quick. This is where you're going to get that quick boom, snap back of the head and a fast knockout. If you've got hold of the tricep, you can control his unconscious descent to the ground. Right? If you look back at some of the old manuals that taught this, you can go right back to the World War I period. It was actually referred to as a chin sh shove, where they were literally just using to snap the head back and shove the person down to the ground. This is a relatively low level use of force in the chin jab, because it's kind of indexing and then pushing rather than striking and smashing through. This is a good means to put somebody to the ground quickly. Quite a lot of the old manuals will have the code going from the chin jab into the eyes. But if you go chin sharp and drive the head back by the eyes, now you're going to get a good takedown. But here, my focus is on striking. So, I had a friend who implemented uh, striking somebody with a chin jab without holding onto them. And he put it right through and they went horizontal. They hit the ground relatively hard. Fortunately for him, they didn't impact the back of the head to the skull, the back of the head to the ground. But he was unconscious for a period. So, got to be careful with this strike. Of course, it creates damage to the neck. So, it's a, a level 10 use of force if you're unarmed, if you're going to use it in that way. But like I say, you can turn the violence volume down. So, I could just use it here as a jab, just a jut of the head. Control descent. I could use that as a sharp to put the person on the ground, or you know, situation warranted, I could put it right up through into the ceiling. So the feeling that you want to implement when you hit is, is I want to go almost to my chest to chest. So my hand is shooting up to the sky, literally. 
right here. The chin jab just bam, a little shot like this. The legitimate full on shot would see this kind of energy driving through the head, through the head, where I end up pretty much chest to chest on the subject. Now, the way it was implemented, if historical journals are true, during World War II, it was implemented via this checking of the arm, but also the it. So as an example, you could just be throwing power straight up through the head in this way. Now this dummy is full of ballast and water, so it's relatively heavy, fucking ball like heavy to move, we use a power truck, but the um, the shot that I've just thrown straight comes straight up under the chin and snapped back and continued its inertia forward. This would be a full-on shot. Find a shot you know, in this way through the head. You know, you, you want to be in a dire situation to implement that level you support. But that's what combatus is all about, right? Using up to including a level 10 use of force, particularly if you're you know unarmed, subject is reaching for a knife. Context it takes content, but the chin jab in its classical way is taught checking the tricep as you move to the flank, driving this structure straight up. And you can leave it on there for plastic energy, or as I prefer, just that short up and under. You might not even check for the chin jab, just push the shot straight up between from where you are. You learn how to do it. Both hands. So as I throw it, I'm not staying central, centre line to centre line. I'm moving. The shot just comes up, boom, straight up. You know, boom, and under the chin. Boom, here. Or boom, here. Straight up and under. This is a classic chin jab, right? Another variant of the chin jab that you can look at is employing it from a seated position. So, understand the context. If I was seated and there was a recognized threat walking towards me, I wouldn't stay seated, right? So if I was seated, let's say I'm sitting on this little bench, and the subject walked this close to giving me a problem, and I was aware that the problem was coming, then I would already be up, possibly behind my seat structure, making distance, making a boundary. Right? But this isn't that. Imagine that you're sat. So a good example, this was shown to me by a guy called Kettle from Norway. Dennis Martin course. He loved the chin jab, really big hands, used it quite a lot. And one of his students had implemented it from a seated structure on a train. And there was a guy that was panhandling, giving people problems, walking up to people, and he kind of made a note of him and just carried on with what he was doing, whatever it was. And he was seated when the guy got close, and then the guy reached towards him. And rather than stay here and be grabbed, or get up and engage as the guy was coming, he hit him on his way in. So what he did is, he pushed off his back foot and drove his body upward. And as he drove his body upward, he hit with that chin jab, straight up and into the chin, especially from a seat position, <coughs> launching as he came up. So, worked pretty well for him apparently. I was horizontal, unconscious for a period. The final way in which you can use it, it's called a double chin jab. So, bilateral strike. So unilateral, one hand, bilateral, will be both at the same time. So think of double slap. Double palm strike is basically coming straight out into the face, straight out. And as you throw it out, it raises the shoulders and drops the chin. So this is a really good shot to throw from a flinch, from a flinch kind of perspective. And you could put it double palm push into the chest in order to create space to run. Or you could snap it straight into the forehead. The height is kind of even, snaps the head back, moves the physiology back. If there is a height disparity, you come straight boom, up and under the chin. And the configuration is just place one hand and then the other hand over it. So you've got like two palms. Two palms, so I'm hitting with the same part, but left and right, aiming at the whole platform of the chin and jawbone. Very usual shot for women. Fairbairn, or WE Fairbairn, incorporated um, this strike in a depiction pictorial sense in the book Hands Off, which he uh, wrote for women. And it was implemented straight, straight up in this way, 
under the chin. Final thing I'll say about this uh, strike or the chin jab in general, any combative strike makes it into your armory. It's got to work twofold. It's got to work offensively, which means from here, proactive, I recognize pre threat cue, and then here, then I strike. And it's also got to work reactively. So, in this example, if the subject was to grab me with one or both hands, and my hands are up, I can seize onto one holding limb and strike with the other. Just the same here. If I was grab, I could still strike with this double chin jab because he's given up one or both arms and I still have two free. Very useful in this sense. So this is the chin jab, you know, the old World War II staple, but basically it's just a palm strike, right? So palm strike can be thrown straight in linear, like a piston. It can be thrown up like a chin jab. It can be thrown around like a palm hook. It can be somewhere in between and canted. You can attach or not, or you can use both hands as I've depicted. Understand the versatility of using the palm, open-handed palm strike in this way.